So here we have our pauldron. It's dry. It's got a rock. It's super exciting. And now we're going to take it out of the rubber band frame to make sure that it's going to fit on the shoulder well. Okay. So just peel the rubber band off. Remove your little aggressive shaping material. That's to prevent the rubber band from cutting into the mold, if you don't remember from the last video. And then we'll have our preformed shape. And one thing you'll notice is that on the edge, there's a little bit of a, a waver to it. So when we put this on the shoulder here, it fits really well. It's super, super snug. Now, something to consider is if you're planning on wearing this over um, some clothing, like a hoodie or a jacket, or you're designing it so that there's going to be garments underneath, you're going to want to make sure that this curve matches your shoulder, but then has a little extra material. So this is a perfect fit for me, and I intend to wear the armor just, just above a very thin layer of cloth. Um, but if you're planning on bulking that up with padding, you do want to add a little extra opening to this design so you can flare it. And again, the vegetable tan leather has some pliability, which gives you a lot of, of leeway. And if you're starting to add metal components, that's when you're going to see it really become uh, important to check for that. So we have our shape, we're satisfied, and at this point we can start asking ourselves where on the shoulder we want our pauldron to fit, what gives us the most range of motion, whether or not we're stabbing ourselves in the neck, that's always a good check, and then really can you do full flexion and extension of your arm when you're doing all your motions. So usually what I'll do is I'll pin it to my shoulder and move around several times to make sure I have the motion I want. I'm feeling this corner here does a little bit of digging into my collarbone, and so that may adjust the height at which I put it on, or I may decide to wet this detail and make it go further out. I think for design's sake, I will probably have it rest right about here because it doesn't affect my bicep at all, and as I'm lifting my shoulder, there's no constriction and I'm not running into any bony masses. And that tells me that I will want to put a strap down here to encapsulate the uh, arm, but then I will also need another strap right at this point here that's going to go across the chest. Okay, so if you haven't looked at the um, what not to do and what to do armor videos with Cass, um, that will be helpful in understanding the decisions that we're making about where our pick points are on our piece of armor and how we're going to get it to fit the body because the only lash points we have are right around the bicep and then around the torso. We don't have any way to anchor any further up, right? Because you're looking for a, a narrow point and then another point so that this armor can't slide up and down while you're moving and it's not going to roll forward or back again while you're moving. Okay, so here's our rock. Here's our pauldron form. And I'm going to bring this closer to the camera so you can see the wavy details. If I want to remove these, it'll be with a spritz of water and then some light forming. So let's just focus on this. So we're looking at the armor detail and you can see on the edge we have that wave. And so the only concern there is that we may want to flatten that for anchorage. But for right now, I'm going to like attach some rivets and do some test fitting and figure out where exactly I want this line to go relative to my body. 